Well, how's it going, Joe? Mm, not so great. So, we've been out here hanging out on the dock with the kids for the I last little bit. Every day. Yeah, every day, every morning, every day. And um, man, this like already hit me hard. I'm struggling already. So, I honestly can't believe we have to make this video. Um, while it was, while we, all the shots we just got were really cute and fun. Um, the reality is that we're running out of time out here yeah. and uh it's not going to be like that much longer yeah for a long time so i'm gonna quit kind of beating around the bush they're draining this lake it's like the worst thing ever really. yeah and we've known about this for a little bit now um for a couple of months or like a month and a half but we were never really anticipating it or expecting it, it came as a shock um and when i say they're draining the lake they're literally emptying every um, gallon yeah. of this lake. There's not it. going to be a single fish in this lake. And if there is, they're going to kill them. Yeah. As what they said at the meeting. So some of these, there's some, there's some holes, there's some creek channels, some old lake beds that are going to hold fish and a little bit of water, but um, it's all going to be gone. For those of y'all that have kept up with the channel for a long time, we have, uh, we've, well, we've lived at this house on this lake for a little over five years now. It's our mm -hmm. dream. It's our dream lot on our dream lake. Mm -hmm. Like we're living our dream life right now. Yeah. And a lot of it is in part to you guys, but if we didn't have any of this, we, we didn't have y'all, like we would still have this. We would have each other and we would yeah. have this lake. And it's something that I've had my entire life. Like this has been my refuge, my safe haven, my happy place. Yeah. This place has kept me out of trouble my entire life. And if I didn't have Jay, I would have this lake still. You know, it's like one of the things I would, cool. I, I've had this lake, you know, through the good times, the bad times. And I've, I've had so many memories and it's literally molded me into the person that I am today. And a little bit of what Jay's become. I mean, she mm -hmm. didn't grow up living on this lake, obviously, but yeah. I mean, it means a lot to her also. Yes. Um, it's like the, I mean, we've always dreamed of like raising our family here. And so we, we've been doing that for these past couple of years. And now it's just kind of being taken away from us. Yeah. Grinding it out, you know, through our early, early stages of adulthood, just so we could have this opportunity. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're very blessed to even have the, have the opportunity to buy this house and to live out here. But like, it's, it's really tough. Um, I know we kind of just kind of start off this kind of rambling, kind of weird. Let's kind of like backtrack a little bit. They're draining this lake. Uh, this is a giant lake. This is honestly one of Arkansas's probably top five fishing lakes in, you know, in the entire state. Um, and the only lakes I feel like that can compete with really are like big, the big giant Ozark lakes up north. And there's probably a couple other ones I'm not thinking of, but like as far as the fishery goes, there's not a better fishery, especially in central Arkansas and like not anywhere nearby. I yeah. mean, and that's why we spent so much time out here yeah. because it's literally the best. And, and it's, it's the most unique lake. Oh yeah, on top of it being a great fishery, it's a dang wildlife sanctuary. Yeah. And that's the other reason why we love it here. I mean, there's not another place you can come out here and have these beautiful sights. We have a sun going down over here. There's nothing like a sunset out here on this lake. We got cypress trees. And we literally named our son Cypress after the cypress trees that we see out here on this lake. Um, we got lily pads, we got frogs. We got frogs croaking over there. Um, you can hear frogs pretty much all times of the year, except for like the deep winter, different species. It's just amazing. And yeah, I have the opportunity to watch a bunch of unique migrating waterfowl in the, in the fall and winter, which that's also getting kind of taken away too. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, this lake is a way we also provide for our family too. Like we uh, harvest the fish from here. We uh, hunt the ducks out here and it really makes up the majority of our, of our diet, but it makes up the majority of our fun too. It's all we think about, it's all we do. Yeah. Whenever we lived away from here, like when we were, whenever we were in school, like all we did was long to get back to this place yeah. and fish it and skipped a lot of classes so we could fish here. Like, why don't you fish up there? Because there ain't nowhere to fish up there. And it's like, why don't you fish some of the other lakes nearby here? Because they're not as good as this place. So anyways, um, let's backtrack again. They're draining this lake. This is a 6,700 acre lake. This is a giant lake. It stretches seven miles that way, goes a long ways that way, and it encompasses a bunch of beautiful cypress swamps, a lot of animals, a lot of fish. We already talked about that. Um, and it really, like, it's gonna, like, just really affect us. It's really going to displace us because, you know, as y'all know, we've been creating, you know, content on YouTube for a long time now. I say a long time, five years. Uh, yeah, this is where it all started. It's where it all started. This is where it happens. If we've made, I don't know how many videos we made. I think we made like 600 videos. We've Sorry. made 700 videos, um, 700 videos. And if we've made 700 videos, we made 500 here. Yeah. And we intended to make more videos here. Um, a whole lot more, especially this fall. You know, we wait for the fall season. Um, this is usually kind of the slow time, like August, July and August are like the slowest times out here on this lake. So that's why you haven't been seeing a whole lot of content recently out here. Um, but every other month, it's game on. Oh yeah. 
And uh, honestly, I haven't been out here because it makes me sad. Yeah. Um, I come out here, I fish a little bit. It's hard to film because I'm just like on the on the bridge of crying the whole time I'm out here. And Jay comes in and is like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. They're draining the lake. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but anyways, let's, uh, let's talk about why they're draining the lake. Let's also talk about the timeline a little bit. So there's always been swirling rumors that they're going to drain this lake. And when I think about that, I think about normal temporary drawdowns, not mm -hmm. emptying, drawdowns. Yeah. And um, so last time they did a drawdown was in 2006. They did like a six month drawdown from like the late summer, which they're going to start drawing it down now until the springtime. And that's awesome. I love a lake drawdown. And it's been a long time. How long is that? 17 years? Mm -hmm. That's 17 years since the last drawdown. Drawdowns allow for people that live out here to, you know, work on their docks. Our dock is not in great shape. Um, and it's really hard to fix it because it's out here in the water. It's hard, yeah. to, it's hard to fix a dock. And our shoreline could use some work um, and be cool to, like, dig out some stuff. Like, drawing a lake down is awesome especially when there's still water because you can still access the lake and fish it the fishing's really good and you can get some job get some work done so whenever they were talking about drawing a lake down it's like okay sweet i think everybody that lives around this lake was like pretty excited honestly like yeah. that sounds cool like we can all do some stuff yeah. it's been a long time it's no big deal um but then it was june the 15th and uh, we're hearing these rumors, it's like hearing some officials say, no, nah, it ain't happening. Yes, it's happening. It's really weird. And all of a sudden, boom, we get like notification of this giant renovation plan for this lake where they're emptying the whole thing. They got this grand scale thing of things, list of things they're going to do to it to fix it. And, um, you know, a lot of it, it sounds awesome, some of the things they're going to do. But it's stuff that I feel like you can do without emptying the entire lake. And a lot of it is definitely achievable without emptying the lake. This is a shallow lake. Like a five-foot drawdown or six-foot drawdown is like 60 to 70% of this lake is yeah. gone. That's a big deal. But there's still water to be sold fish. Mm -hmm. No big deal. I think that what we have the biggest problem with is the timeline. They're drawing the lake down. We haven't even told you all this yet. Yeah. They're emptying it for five, five. five years dry. And then they're planning to refill it and stock new fish, which will take several more years for the fish to rebound. So like your smaller fish, like your bluegill, your crappie, they, they tend to grow a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. And bass can put on weight, you know, pretty quickly in a year's time. But I mean, this is a, I forget how old this lake, this is a 70 year old lake. Um, these fish have been out here, you know, since day one doing their thing, you know, they've got their way of living. Like these fish are different than fish in other lakes. And y'all know that people that fish, like fish are very different from lake to lake. Um, and their biology is just, it's so unique how these fish operate. Um, so I'm just, I'm just worried. I'm, I'm terrified. Like, I know that, we, I know that you, fish are going to come back in this lake. We're going to have fish again. We have potential to have big fish. It could yeah. be a great, it could be awesome. It could really be awesome. It's just the timeline sucks. Like five years is a long time. Like, you know, our it's, lifetime. It's like, is it actually going to be five years or is it going to be longer than five years? Or could it be less? It'd be awesome if it was less. Yeah. I would, but I don't know. I really wish that we weren't emptying the entire lake and getting rid, of, getting rid of all the fish because even the biologists in the lake will tell you that the fish is not the problem. They have, the fishing has not been better. I've fished out yeah. here 300 days a year for, let's see, I started fishing out here hardcore when I was 13, I'm 29 now, 16 years. I've put in 300 days a year at least easy a day, a year out here, whether it's an hour, whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's 10 hours out here. And I've seen a lot of good things and a lot of bad things happen out here and I've had some really good seasons and some seasons that aren't as good but overall the fishing is booming and the people using this lake are more than ever more people using this lake than ever it's a really great thing yeah. like this spring I had one of the best springs I've ever had on this lake bass fishing crappie fishing bluegill fishing bluegill cat fishing cat. you can watch our videos you can watch all our videos out here like we we, we stroke them I and we know how to catch fish out here and we understand that not everybody doesn't know how to catch fish out here but it's not hard it's really not that hard to catch fish on this lake because um, there's so many fish. <laughs> yeah, like whenever they're doing crappie surveys in the fall, like in the in the spot where we go crap fish all the time, they can't even get the nets yeah. in the boat because they're so full of fish. Like there's not a, there's not another lake in the state where you can literally go any day of the year you want to and catch a limit of whatever fish you want to, like you can out here, except for like July and August, which is yeah. kind of I don't know if that's why they kind of decided they're going to I don't know when they're going to announce this and you know that we're going to draw a lake because it's kind of like a you know a time of year when people aren't fishing as much. Um, and when the fishing's not as good, and like when the vegetation is topped out and the lake doesn't look as beautiful as it as it could be, I like all the vegetation. Um, but you know, this is this is probably the worst the lake looks every year. So I'm not know if they're just trying to get that image in people's mind or make it not sting as bad because they you know announced this and 
you know, two months from now when the fishing is like, whew, like so stupid good. That'd yeah. be, yeah. that'd be a lot of people up in arms. And a lot of people are up in arms. I don't yeah. think there's a single person on this lake that lives here that is happy about this. And we weren't, we haven't met any. We weren't alarmed. We weren't notified. And they know, like, nobody knew that this was coming. Yeah. There might it's be happening a, so fast. Yeah, it's oh. happening so fast. Like, they told us, they told us June 15th and the day that they're drawing the lake down is September 1st, which is in four days. We wanted to make this video sooner, but we just didn't really know how to tell y'all. We didn't know how to film this. Like, we're doing our best. And we've literally just been so upset. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to even, like, think about making this video. Yeah, when you start thinking about the big picture, like, how it affects us individually and how it's going to affect our family and just our and livelihood. it affects so many people. Like, it affects a ton of people. Yeah. I mean, there's people I mean, that moved here out of state, bought a house this year to live on this lake, yeah. and then boom, gone. Yeah. There's so many kids, just like me, whenever I was young, they're getting into fishing. So many kids out here that are fishing. Mm -hmm. Good anglers. Like this is their happy place and it's yeah. being taken away from them yeah. and it's like just just again the the time frame is what's tough if it was one year two years maybe even three years okay but like five yeah. years plus having to restock the fish like yeah. these kids are never going to get to fish like if this happened to me whenever i was 13 i would not be the person i am today yeah. i mean that's what that's what i think about and that's what that's what's frustrating it's more than just like my personal feelings how it's affecting everybody else yeah. um and also like we have Cypress, who's two years old. And that kid can and fish. That kid, every morning when he wakes up, he wants to come out here on the dock and go fishing. He's like, Mom, Dad, I want to go fishing. And he's getting really good at it. But I mean, it's just like, I don't know. It's it's so awesome to watch him. and But it also just, it's like breaking it's, it's, our hearts. It's very heartbreaking. This is going to be taken away from him. You and know? summer. Which yeah, summer's little. Summer, She's yeah. not even going to know. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anything we can do. I don't know if it's too late. I don't know if we didn't push it hard enough. It seemed like it was if we were to try to do anything, it'd be like some big, like crazy legal battles or stuff, and it just wouldn't be worth. Like I just don't know if there's anything we can do about it at this point. Um, I have no idea. We just wish it wasn't happening. We just wish it wasn't happening. So there's a couple of main reasons why they feel it's essential to drain the entire lake and why this is happening in the first place. Um, so I think probably the biggest reason that they they harped on a lot is the so since the lake's been here it's been like 70 years there's been a ton of sediments and organic material from like all the plants that are building up on the lake bed the original lake bed and we've lost i forget how many cubic gallons of, of water um due to that you know that, that elevation on the lake bottom but it's it's a pretty significant amount um it's not really affecting this too crazy and the reason for that like i said is the decay of like organic material out here and because of the economic growth in the cities around here just like you know sediments flowing in just from erosion just from i mean this place this town we, that we live in has gotten really big over the last several years and so what they're thinking is that in the span of five years with the lake bed dry and these organic materials and sediments being exposed to dry sunlight that they will bake and compact down and in some areas will increase the, the depth of the lake maybe one to two feet. That's kind of hard to, to imagine, but, and I really, I haven't really seen a whole lot of research on that. I've kind of looked around. It's hard to find, it's hard to find stuff on, like specific studies on this. Um, and especially like there's no, there's not really like any publications like on this lake that I, that I really know of that can be reliable sources. Um, I'm not discrediting it. It definitely could happen. But it's just like, that's what we're doing. We're emptying the entire lake and all these fish so that we can maybe get a little bit of extra depth. And why are we worrying about the middle of the lake that could hold water and, and keep our fish if, if what we're concerned about is around the perimeter? I mean, like I said, a five foot drawdown is drastic out here. Um, most of the lake is gone and maybe that could just be exposed and um, we could still keep our fish. I just want our fish. I'm literally just trying to save our fish. Um, I'm also really worried about the wildlife. <laughs> I'm worried about the wildlife yeah, too. The just turtles, placing turtles, frogs, snakes. snakes, gators, beavers, birds, migratory birds, yeah. everything. Alligators, snapping turtles. Like, they're they're a protected species, um, and I just don't know. I don't know. We have a bunch of alligators, snapping turtles out here. This is a great place for them. So I just don't know. Um, then also, they're wanting to replace the existing dam with a spillway. Um, that'll be nice. The spillway is nice because you don't have to worry about the fluctuation in lake levels all the time. It's just kind of just stable. Like that's kind of cool. I think you can build a spillway by building a temporary dam in a couple of spots and they could do that without emptying the entire lake. But that's another key thing. And the other thing is um, reworking boat trails. The boat trails out here are 
pretty horrific. Um, they actually did make clear out a boat lane last summer without doing any draining of the lake. So that can be done without draining the lake. But remarking the boat trails would be fantastic and clearing some out. That'd be really, really good. And then they're wanting to renovate some more public areas, uh, make them a little bit more accessible. I mean, they're pretty accessible. We have great boat ramps all across the lake. Got great places to bank fish, but just, I guess they're wanting to improve them. And then something on their website they're talking about is they're wanting to increase the amount of structure out here in the lake, which I don't, I don't really understand. On the website it says they're wanting to improve it from 350 pieces of artificial structure to 3,350. And I just don't feel like that. I feel like that's a waste of time and pointless because if you look around, we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of cypress trees. We have stumps from old cypress trees. We've got grass lanes. We've got, we got boat docks. We've got thousands of boat docks out here. We've got rock jetties. We've got literally everything out here. Tons and tons of structure. Um, so I don't think we really need to put energy into doing that when there's all these other things to do. If it's gonna, I don't know. If they have time for that, whatever, but I just don't feel like that's important. And fish, and from my, and like whenever I'm out here on the lake with my big boat, like with my graphs live scoping around, like the whole <laughs> entire lake bottom is a giant brush pile. Yeah. Um, so I just don't feel like that's necessary um, and where we need to be putting time in out here. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else they want to do. They want to, I don't know, plant some more cypress trees and put some more vegetation out here. I don't know. They contract people to spray vegetation out here every year. So I don't really know how that's going to go. I really don't know. It's tough. I'm just, it's hard to not be salty. Like, like I like these people. Um, you know, I like the AGFC, but it's just like, this is, this is just the one thing that you could do that could literally, I mean, this is like, this ruin, this like literally ruins my life. And, uh, yeah, I told Cole the other day, I cannot think of anything worse to do to Cole. Like, <laughs> and I think it's okay to be frustrated yeah, yeah. and to express my concerns, but yeah, this is literally like, I, I'd rather go to jail for two years probably and know that my lake is still has water. Like, can we compromise on that? I would literally go to jail for a year, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I would probably do it <laughs> as long as as long as the lake still have water in it. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about like the water. So so on September first, they're opening up one gate at the dam, and it's going to be a slow flow. They're not just going to like dump it all out, you know, at once. So we're actually going to have water for a little bit, but their plan is to have it dry by spring 2024. So we don't have a lot of time. And that's going to affect the fishing. Like when the water's dropping, fish don't really bite that good. Mm -hmm. They have lifted the limits out here on the lake. And it's no rules. You can keep whatever you want, um, which I kind of hate too. They've also tried to encourage people to come out here and fish. They've tagged like 500 fish, yeah. I think. If you catch a tag fish, you won 500 bucks. I don't really know. It's like literally the worst time of year to fish. There's been a couple of caught, but it's literally the worst time to fish out here. Maybe people will catch them. I don't know. Like. I just I don't know if we should be allocating that money into catching fish when it could be going into like renovating the lake. But maybe they got enough money to renovate the lake. They don't really care about spending that on just tag fish. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, people have to catch them anyways. But is there anything else? I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a lot. Like I mean, I just want y'all know like this 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 hurts us tremendously. We're very sad, and we don't really know what this means for us in the future. Um, we never really have had any sort of thought or intention on like selling our property or moving. And I still don't think we do. It's just going to be so tough being here. So I'm not sure what that means. I don't know if it means we do move and keep this place and move somewhere for a little bit. Maybe we move to Florida or Hawaii. I don't know. We got to fish somewhere good. We just think we're going to be really depressed. Just looking out our window and seeing this dried lake. Yeah, and I'm also, and I'm, there's a lot of other things I'll probably touch on later on some in some later videos. It's starting to get late now, it's getting dark. Um, but there's a lot of things that I have a lot of questions about. Maybe we can get a Game and Fish um, employee on and we can talk to them about it. Uh, maybe hear what yeah. they have to say about it. Um, but yeah, this is devastating and I think it's a huge blow to Central Arkansas. Mm -hmm. I think it's a huge blow to fishing in general. I think it's a huge blow to the city. And I think it's just a, I think it's just a huge blow to the, to the state in general, because people travel from all over the place to fish this lake. And you know, if in the end, 10 years from now, this is a fantastic fishery, which I honestly think it probably could be. 
but it's a fantastic fishery now and I think yeah. that we could I think, I think there's things we could do without emptying the entire lake to, to improve it and make it that way um, we like I said with a 60 70 percent drawdown that allows us to still keep our fish because the fish are absolutely not the problem um, and I think that yeah I mean I'm good I'm good with anything if we can keep our fish I'll I'd do uh, anything for these yeah, fish yeah anything so I don't I have no idea how long I've been rambling on about this um, I could talk about this all day I can get fired up yeah I can get fired up I can get downright emotional I could throw myself off this dock right now <laughs> um, but I don't know if it's gonna change anything but what we want to leave y'all with is some assurance that like this is not the end of Colin J no. this is not the end of yeah. our channel it's not the end of our lives um, it's a it's a it's a very difficult and uh, weird time yeah. to be alive if you're if you're me right now and Jay but <laughs> oh my gosh I'm stressed um, but we're still gonna make fishing videos we we're, just won't be making them out here yeah we're still gonna be we're still gonna be we're gonna make them out here as long as we possibly yes, can yes. but we're still gonna be promoting the outdoors still yes. trying to encourage y'all to get out and go fishing I mean like there's a kingfisher flying over right now. It's these little things like that. Like that's not that's not gonna be a thing anymore. It's the simple things. Like I've one last little tangent. I have never taken a day out here for granted, and I don't plan to. But like I'm not gonna be able to like come out here and listen to a dang kingfisher fly over, watch a duck fight, have a turtle fall. I have a log out here that I look at every morning and see how many turtles are on it. <laughs> there are gonna be zero turtles oh, on that log. Oh my God. They're even there in the wintertime. I'm not gonna come out here with the hopes of <sighs> and fantasies of seeing an alligator, which I did see once. I'm not gonna see bass schooling and run from my kitchen and have a, I have a pole right here in my hand because <laughs> if a bass jumps, I could throw it from my seat and probably catch it. Yeah. And that's what I have it here for, and it's a safety blanket. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna stop making videos. We're gonna keep fishing, going all over the place. Um, we're gonna travel around. We might have to travel further. We might have to chase different species. We might have to go to new places we've never been to before. And like I said, we might have to relocate, but we're gonna do it um, as positively, with as, as with as positive of, as as positive as of an attitude. <laughs> I cannot talk of an attitude as we possibly can, and uh, yeah, still try to keep y'all inspired and try to catch a lot of fish and cook them up and you know live the lives that we were that we were created to. Yeah. And I feel like this is what we're what we were both designed to do, and um, yeah, we're not gonna give it up and we're not going down without a fight.